The views and opinions expressed on this program do not reflect the company, owners, management, staff, clients, or partners. It's Wednesday, the 10th day of April, 2024. Welcome to Bermuda's Daily Talk Show. It's the Daily Hour brought to you by the BAC Group of Companies, Medical Oslo Windows, and People's Pharmacy. I'm Jamel Hartman. She's Maya Palacio. And Teo Dill will be with us in a bit to bring you the latest in his news break brought to you by People's Pharmacy. Happy um, hump day, Maya. How are you? I'm feeling great. How are you? I'm, I'm doing well. I, I can't complain. Um, only because you said it, but um, you... You did you hear yourself? Yeah, Jamal, you can't say it now that I've already told you. <laughs> you didn't give me a chance. I was just working on my trade. You know, we were talking about it recently, so. <laughs> oh, I see what you did there. See what you did to trade, it, folks. If the whole news thing don't work out, she can do some work for you. I was ready here to pay for my education, so yeah, I can do this. <laughs> you know, I saw an interesting argument on Twitter amongst, like, race, races, people from different races, and it was um, some... Uh, mega guys, uh, mega meaning the make America great again, meaning mm -hmm. Trump those folks. But they were basically saying they showed some historical thing um, back in 80 or something that bred and started with some version of Europeans. It's not a black thing. Stop trying to earn it. I was just, I, man, I just scrolled one after a little read. I was like, no, I'm not getting into this. And so it was a back and forth. And you know how those things go on Twitter. Just interesting, right? Yeah, don't right get me started on those type of comments and those type of talks, Jamal. Yeah, 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 but well, let's not do it. Let's not do it. Well, anyway, for, well, Suzanne Ingham says, uh, awesome day, Jamal and Maya. Hair looks great. Oh, thank you, Suzanne. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I think she's talking about Maya, but, you know. Um, <laughs> greetings, everyone, and thanks for making us part of your daily routine. A good one today as we welcome Brittany Butterworth on to discuss the chat more experience. I'm looking forward to this. Um, mm -hmm. Always enjoy these conversations um, with uh, educators who offer alternative options for uh, students, um, especially knowing and understanding the kind of student or child that I was. I wouldn't consider myself a student. I was forced to be a student, really. Um, well, most of us were. But did you like school, Maya? Yeah, I'll say I liked school. For the most part, I liked school. I think I just liked, yeah, I liked it, I think. <laughs> I didn't like school until I got to college because I, it was the first time I got to do stuff I was interested in, you know, radio and TV stuff and production and so on. But yeah, school didn't like me. That's what I'm going to say. <laughs> sports got me through. I think it was really sports that really got me through. I was always excited for gym class and stuff like that. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. On? Okay. So there you go. Yeah. They forced this curriculum on me that just, it, it didn't really work out. You know what I'm saying? It weren't, weren't really for me. So um, one size fits all. But anyway, folks, don't forget to subscribe on our website, thedailyhour.com. Follow us on all of our social media channels to stay up to date with all that we have going on. Help us grow beyond the mic as we do our part to continue to improve our community. So Maya, I literally said this two or five minutes ago. I said, Maya, what are we talking about today? And I um, said, you know what, Maya, let's talk about young people and politics. You know, to Ray, I, I hope to Ray is tuned in. Um, you know, her and I, had interest in back and forth uh, last week or week before last about young people and so on. And I think, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm not, I haven't considered my young for the la self young for the last 15 years. Um, I don't think youth is anyone over 30, by the way. I think we throw that word youth around like people are forever young. I mean, maybe so in their hearts and in their minds, but at the end of the day, to me, young is anyone in that first to second 
election cycle. You know, um, have, how have, how many like election cycles have you been legally able to vote, Maya? I think two. Two? Okay, 2017 and 2020. Hold on. Yes. Oh. Yes. You have a birthday tomorrow, so I'm I'll actually how old you are tomorrow. Okay. Um <laughs> but I'm saying that um because I, I think we we throw the word youth around, but I think it's necessary, especially with the the conversation around Sir John's age being one of interest by a lot of people, you know, people some people and many older people, people over 40, oh, why don't, you know, he step aside, oh, he's his age, he's too old and this and that. And I think it's important that we kind of gather the thoughts of young Bermudians and really figure out what is it they want? What are their thoughts? And that's not to say, as I was talking to Ray, that every young person thinks alike, but we know that young people are typically drive um, politics and, and, and their decisions drive things. So question of the morning is how can we get young people excited about politics? And I remember Maya, you speaking one time a long time ago um, about why you wanted to be a reporter and journalist, like really to connect young people with politics, if I'm not mistaken. But, you know, that's the question audience. How can we get young people more excited about politics? What, what can we do to get them excited about politics? Actually, I have a question to that question. Are we talking about just being knowledgeable about it in the first place and wanting to know about it, or are we talking about actually running and being, you know, like actually running? No, not not getting involved, just getting excited about it. So just not involved in politics. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. So I, I, I thanks for asking for that clarity because to get excited about it is to want to vote, to actually want to learn about mm -hmm. the issues of the day and so on. To get involved means putting your head in the ring and be, becoming a you know, politician per se, but really get people excited and interested because there seems to be a lot of empathy, right? Mm. A lot of apathy. Let me think. Well, okay, so first initial thoughts is, I wish I would have asked this question on Media Mile recently because I remember, I do recall asking it a while ago and it's, listen, I think young people are excited about what's going on and do wanna know. I think sometimes just getting the information to them to understand it in a you know nice accessible way is the challenge but also the fact that yeah we aren't really bringing it up in schools i don't know if there's a difference now but when i was at cedar project academy it's just like you learn nothing and i recently um read an article by um taj as well who's very deep into the political sphere also young comedian and he recalled just learning nothing in school and also hearing about his peers in private schools who again learned nothing so it's like it's not really getting passed down to us um the youth forms seem to be a little bit more active these days than it did in my day. But at the same time, I feel like the young people are there to be excited, but you just don't hear about them much. Maybe they're on different platforms that you don't know about. Um, obviously, we got Bermuda Youth Connect and we got Bermuda Is Love. And I think they're doing great jobs of like just getting us connected with our own communities and understanding what we're doing. And myself as well, trying to break down those kind of heavy stories and get it out there as accessible as possible so people can actually you know digest it and know what's going on. So I feel like they're excited, but maybe we just aren't hearing from more on certain platforms in who, each group. You've mentioned him twice. Who, who the hell is hot, Taj? What, what's Taj? I was like, Taj and Otterbridge. And Taj Otterbridge uh, is, I mean, he's a youth activist. He went, like up in school, he's gotten a lot of awards. I believe he's in the UK, but he's been in Bermuda politics from quite a long time. He's a year younger than me, I believe. Quite a long time Taj has been in Bermuda politics. A lot of you guys may have read his articles. He was part of the PLP. I'm not sure if he still is continuing with the PLP mission, but yeah, he was a lot of first for them as well. And, you know, he's just been heavy, heavy into um, the political sphere and learning from, you know, either different people on island or away too. So he recently had an article out, um, uh, I'll get it for you in a minute, but it was basically talking about the state of where politics is right now and how he sees it as a young Bermudian and, and what he's disappointed about truthfully and what needs to be done better. And so this, he actually called more for like independent people running. And then we saw um, Sir John Swan, you know, talk about whether or not he would go in independent and mm. Taj and I actually had a quick conversation about it. Interesting. I'd, I'd like to read some of his articles. I'm not familiar with him, so that's that's on me. But that, Maya, you just made a good point. Um, different um, platforms, young people are 
excited. Uh, maybe it's me and Twitter. I don't see much on LinkedIn, but LinkedIn's a business space, not political. And then Twitter, maybe it's what comes on my timeline. It just seems like more people are interested in when's the next holiday party or where we're drinking this weekend. You know, it just, I don't see as much interest. Um, Instagram just seems like an ad of, you know, selling what I'm doing for my day. So I don't know where to find young people who are interested. I don't know what, I can honestly say without some of your polls, I wouldn't even know what young Grammedians think. You know, like audience, do you have young people, the young people in your life, are they interested in politics? Yes or no, audience. When I say young people, do you have people who are 30 and younger who have an understanding and interest in politics? Yes or no? Are the people around you, Maya, like, you know, fr friends, family, even your siblings, do they have an, any sort of interest, meaning do they even understand what's going on to have a conversation about it? Um, yeah, I would have to say yes to that. I would definitely say yes. And again, I think it's the talking one-on-one. -on -one. A lot of people aren't really, you know, heavy and happy about putting out all their information, all their opinions online and things like that. So like, I feel like generation is younger than me or even a little bit above, just a little bit more reserved in that front. Like we're not putting a lot of information out there because like we've been taught about media literacy a little bit more now about like how things are taken, don't want to lose jobs, all that type of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. But in my own personal conversations, yes, heavy. Mm -hmm. Heavy on talking about what's going on in the political sphere. Um, I, I speak and call my cousins, sisters quite often about this stuff. I know one of your sisters is very outspoken, but honestly, I, I feel like the young people I got around don't have a clue. Like legit, have no interest. Um, you, you, you're you probably one of the few who has an understanding. And I'm speaking about people under 30, Bermuda Youth Connect. Um, people, um, there's the young ladies, I can speak to about politics, have an understanding. Um, I don't want to call anyone out to make them feel bad, but most of the young people I got around literally outside of knowing who the damn premier is have no understanding of what's going on, which is scary to me um, because it's like almost they live as if the daily happenings don't impact them. Um, I did ask just now, do you have any young people um, in your life, and uh, do they have an interest in politics? Um, Gina Ann Richardson says, nope. Um, Angeline Butler says, not yet. They don't have any interest. Um, Suzanne Ingram says, no, none, no interest at all. Um, Emily Gale Dill says, many do, some are disillusioned. Um, Taylor Dill says, youth turnout is disproportionately low throughout the developed world. Most reliable voting blocks is seniors, then the participation rate drops as uh, people get younger. Um, I want to go to this comment um, here. Uh, and again, the question of the morning, how can we get young people excited about politics? Anthony Pete says, engage young people in decision making, honor their ideas, let them develop things from concept to actual realization. Do this intentionally. Uh, utilize this. I think he's saying, I utilize this. I did been in the education arena, student councils, et cetera. Hmm. Okay. I definitely agree with him, um, Maya, in terms of you know, bring don't just bring them in the room. You know, it's, it's that whole thing about having a seat at the table. I don't want to see that at this damn table unless I'm able to be effective, unless my input's going to be valued, right? I've been in many rooms and sat at many tables where it's almost like, you know, this whole DEI thing, you're making up a number, right? Mm. So, and, and I'm going to put, put us on the spot. Let's talk about you and I. Okay. Legit, like, when we talk, it's like, the amount of times you said no to me, and I'm like, okay, we're not doing it. You, you, you get what I'm saying? And not in a bad way, but I'll say, what's your, your opinion on this? For me, I'm not interested in being around people or bringing people in because they're a woman, because they're black, or because of their age. I think like Sir Alex Ferguson with Manchester United's um, kids in 92. If they're good enough, they're old enough, right? Mm. And for me in life, you know, if they have the interest and, and the passion or the, the will to learn, and you bring them along, not to just make up a number, but to help you achieve what it is we can achieve. I do not dismiss people because of age. And the reverse thing is it's sad to see people doing that to Sir John. I, I want to know what young people's perspectives. I mean, someone said it on this show the other day, Maya. I don't know who it was in the comments that. Oh, I know who it was. I'm not going to call them out because I think they may have said it privately to me, but they only know a PLP government. So 
the boogeyman UBP stuff don't really resonate with them. Even at five years of OBA, the majority of their life has been PLP. Mm. So they're not, they're not their parents in that respect. For what their parents tell them, the PLP has not done anything that's much greater outside of not made racist uh, legislation to hold them back, but they've held them back in other ways. That's not my words. That's from a 22-year-old to me. So, yeah, because it's know. all about experience, right? And what you take in, that's kind of how we go. If you're not just experiencing it, you rely on information that's told to you and things that people tell you that you learn, whether it be your parents or the people near you. And again, like you said, and I think we've, we've talked about this before, Jamal, when you said that you went up to um, somebody, they like know nothing other than who the premier is. Well, whose fault is that? I mean, at what age like were they? Because at this point, you know, you can find that stuff help for yourself. But also, who were your influences growing up and what didn't they tell you? Or what education decided to just be remiss to you? Like, you know, the things that we're not passing down, stories we're not telling each other, you know, and we just automatically assume sometimes that young people just have to know this, but we can't know it unless you tell us. Mm -hmm. So it's always a bunch of that too. And I think when, I think, who was it? Um, it was a group that came on and they were just talking about how we're quite disproportionate when it comes to the younger light and the older light. Like we don't have that intergenerational connection where we talk enough about what happened back then and what's happening now. We don't, we've missed the link. We have, like, unless you're really reaching out for it and trying to get it, it's not there and easily accessible. Now, I did actually want to bring up some stats as we talked about earlier, about Sir John Swan and his age, because I did have a poll up on Media Maya. Um, and this one was about whether or not you believe that he's actually too old to be running. And honestly, I put up three options and they're all 35, 30, and 35. The first one, I agree, he's too old to run, 35%. I agree, oh, sorry, I disagree, age doesn't matter, it's 30%. And I don't know, more to consider is 35%. So truthfully, it's split. Age doesn't necessarily matter too much in this decision for a lot of uh, young people on my page who did vote mm -hmm. on that. So yeah, that's just one sense there. Okay. That, that's good info. Um, and majority of Maya's audience will, will probably represent uh, a lot of younger people. Um, my highest age range is 25 to 34 is my... Okay. Yeah. Getting older there. <laughs> How can we get young people excited about politics, audience? Let us know. Um, Sinead Smith says, one, Media Maya, her platform, her way of presenting information, seeing someone in my generation passionate about delivering key information definitely helped to get me engaged in politics. See, look, look at that. I love that. Um, Rosalind Famous says, uh, yes, Maya, the importance of passing on knowledge. Here's the thing. I don't, I don't come from a family where they talked about politics. I come from a family where they engage with politicians, but we didn't talk politics in my house. Um, you know, my mom would probably make a comment or there. My grandfather thought all politicians were just weird people and so on. He had nothing. I think that's the only time I used to hear him cuss. So I didn't come up in a house where we spoke about it. Me learning politics was just from me reading, literally just reading the news. Like that's, I was interested in knowing more. At that time I was in primary school and so on. Uh, Sir John was the premier. And then, um, yeah, transition in high school um, to um, Dr. David Saul and, so and then, uh, Gordon, but also Freddie Wade lived in the neighborhood. The Honorable Late um, Alec Frederick Wade lived in the neighborhood. So getting an understanding of um, what he was fighting for and his angles and, and so on. And then the union marches and, and uh, were all happening like in, in my area where I live. So I learned based on like reading and just my own experiences and understanding. Mm -hmm. um, but also from a child, I saw a lot wrong that I couldn't understand why people didn't fix. As I got older, one of those things that I saw that was wrong was conscription. And when I got old enough, I fought to end conscription. Um, it puzzled me what people fought for, what they didn't fight for. Um, so me, me becoming politically involved or not even politically involved, but getting excited or interested in politics is simply because I saw things wrong in the country that I wanted to fix. And that's how I think that um, it has to be in terms of, you know, getting young people excited. They have to, um, you know, when they have complaints about something, like it's more than just getting on Twitter on public forums, right? If you really want to change stuff, you have to be willing to say, you know what, this is the role I'm going to play in doing it. It doesn't have to be giving your opinion. It could be simply doing something like what Maya's doing, giving a platform for others to discuss how we can solve these problems or Bermuda Youth Connect, giving that option or Bermuda is love, creating environments where they can be the anti, right? 
of what's going on. So there's so many different ways. Um, but how can we get young people excited, folks? What are your thoughts? Well, I had some people actually just now message me, obviously they're watching the show here. But again, most people do like to be anonymous in these sort of talks, kind of proving what I just said earlier. And they said, morning, as a young person in politics, it is interesting hearing the discourse and completely, and sorry, competency and ability of the newer faces. I find this sort of mindset exists in all working environments in Bermuda. Younger or newer folks are often ignored or belittled because they are new or young. I am now seeing this in our politic discourse by the general public. Mm. I'm going to ask you something then on that, because it seems like young people will walk away if they feel like they're being dismissed or ideas aren't being hurt. Mm. As a person in your mid twenties, is that your personality as well? Do you feel like if you're in a space where your ideas aren't being heard, you just feel like you're making up the numbers? Are you walking away? Way to put me on the spot there, Jamal. Um, I think I'll probably stay for as long as I can. I think I literally, I think I feel like I've already done that by leaving Bermuda. As much as I love Bermuda, mm -hmm. I have to like really judge myself here because I mm -hmm. stayed for as long as I felt that I could make an impact but with what I've learned and what I know. I left so I can learn more, you know, probably be respected more when I come back for people to actually value my opinion. I remember when I first kind of started out as, you know, media mind getting recognized over the pandemic and getting emails or getting questions asking me like, well, why should we trust you? What do you know? Like, what's her credibility? Da -da -da -da. Let alone, I'm probably one of the only journalists in Bermuda that have a degree in my field. Like, you know, so it's just like uh, getting criticized a lot because of my age, maybe because I'm also female and because I'm black. That didn't necessarily always help doing that too, but yeah. Well, I remember, oh, she needs to go work for someone else. She doesn't have experience. Yeah, yeah, I remember. Me, I'm no, like- no, I've been doing this since 15. <laughs> No, nah, you get experience by doing the work. But anyway, um, I, honestly, the best teacher is sometimes going out on your own and failing. I'm just mm -hmm. saying. Um, here, here's some quick things, Maya, that I came from. So um, audience, we'll go, let's go to the audience first. So how can we get more people excited about politics? Um, I want to go, Sinead Smith said, number two, seeing younger people get involved and being active in politics contributes to my excitement about it as well because of the uh, relatability factor. Yeah. You, that, let's hold that thought as well. Anthony Pete says, a long time ago, a course called Civics was a standalone subject. All students' information was shared. Lots of discussion occurred. What is your name? So it's true that Civics is no longer offered in school. I saw someone put that on Twitter, but man, I, never saw that well. I, saw, I see so many false things on Twitter. Like saw something yesterday about Dawn Staley married to this lady and like Dawn Staley is not married, but people were running with it. So I didn't know if that was real about civics. Like, is is it not taught in the school anymore? Please let us know. Yes or no. Uh, Terry told us an email supporting Sir John's bid and obviously Bermuda Youth Connect. Congratulations on that. And thank you. N not saying that you should support Sir John, but you support Sir John actually putting himself out there and you're not looking at his age thing. Why do I think Tere gets it? Because she knows how, how it feels as a young person to be dismissed because of age. Mm. Now it's the same to Sir John, dismissing because of age. It's crazy. It's all his accomplishments and all his knowledge. Exactly. Actually, it's, uh, civics is needed, says Anika De Shields. Um, folks, is it not... Um, Somebody let me know. Is Maya, do you, did you have civics in school? I never had that was never an option. <laughs> I had civics up Cedar Bridge. I I, I, I enjoy I love civics. Well, as you can probably tell by the show. Um <laughs> Michael Daniel says, uh, government should make the way forward accessible. The man in the streets needs to make things happen. Does our people have a vision or do our people have a vision for our future? Um Teodil says, Jay, you've nailed the problem. Representative democracy operates on consensus. To drive the consensus, you've got to convince your group to go in your direction. If you're new, um, that takes a lot of time, which can be understandably frustration, frustrating. Yeah, indeed. And um, Teo says, civics, I think, is bundled into social studies curriculum. Interesting. All right. So here's a few things I, can't, I saw, um, Maya. Um, how to get young people excited about politics. One, education. Start by incorporating civic education. Well, that's what everybody's been saying. Two, engagement. Create opportunities for young people to engage with politics directly. This could be mock elections, debates, community projects. You know, I wish I was on the debate team. Oh, me too. 
gee, that's one thing I regret. But I don't want to say about it, but they made it seem like it wasn't a cool thing to do. So I didn't want to get involved because it's saved by the bell. That's what the like geeks and nerds did. But anyway, uh, digital platforms, um, leverage social media and digital platforms to reach audiences. Um, use engaging content like videos and Instagram. That's what Maya does for you all. You know, um, and does a fantastic job of it, which is why I kind of put on the spot. Like Maya, didn't you do a poll? It's just like you tell me now. I'm, I'll have to go look for it. But she gets things pretty fast. But she gets does it. Role models. Now this is important. Who are the young people in politics that young people can look toward? Like mm -hmm. if I have a young person right now, who's a young person in politics that you can look up to and say, you know, I'd like to follow that person. This this still all relatively new. Um, I like I'm following their careers though. That's for mm -hmm. sure. Definitely following their careers because again, <clears throat> proximity age and you want to know like okay what are you going to do are you going to stand out alone or are you going to continue to fall in with the masses of maybe what our generation has already said that we don't want but because you're there now are you going to change up are you going to keep standing up well the proof's in the pudding um there are a couple of young people that i kind of had hoped for um what's lister the dirt dennis lister um and then Dwayne robinson um there's a couple young people uh Okay, let's move on. Um, youth organizations. Um, we've got Bermuda Youth Connect. I mentioned them, right? Um, support and promote their, their, these organizations who are focused on political activism and advocacy. Future um, leaders and, as well. What's that? Future leaders as Future, well. Yep. And um, also, I would say Bermuda is love because it's some form of activism. Oh, uh, yeah, definitely. Connect political issues to topics that resonate with young people. You mentioned Taj. Um, what's his last name? Sorry. Out of bridge. Out of bridge. Out of bridge. Like, read his articles, folks. And again, apologies. I don't know about it. Um, and empowerment. Empower young people. Give them a voice. I, I will continue to say, no young person, and when I say young, anyone under 35, 30, can ever say that working with me or being around me is to make up numbers. Like, you are here to make a difference because I believe in what you should believe in. And that's what the difference that you can make for our community. So, um, those are a few ways I would love to see, love to see more young people. And, and I, I know, Maya, that not everyone's going to be like me and have a big mouth and put it publicly and so on. But these conversations literally can happen in private with your family. You know what? Think about what I say at the end of every show. Make sure you share these conversations. Make sure you have these conversations around your water cooler, around, at your family dinner, at your family barbecue party. These are the conversations you can have. Yeah. Because I was disappointed two Christmases ago at my family um, holiday dinner. We call it Christmas, but you know, this is the show. We've got to be politically correct. Holiday dinner. And my young cousins didn't know nothing about tech. And one of my uncles in the room went to tech. That disappointed me. But again, the failure is on us for them not knowing. Thank you. Let me be clear. The failure is on us for them not knowing about tech. How are we sending children off to school to study stuff? And you know what? We got to bring Taylor in for daily. Yes, we, yes we, we do. We got a very special guest coming to talk about education today, chat more experience. Let's bring Taylor Dill in. And um, folks, I will say um, thank you to the work of Maya and the team. We have our commercial breaks have gotten a lot longer. So just bear with us. We will not impact the conversation and your contribution. So stick with us. We'll be back after the, well, we have the news break, then we'll take a break, and then we'll have Brittany Butterworth on from Chat More. Stick with us. Greetings. Yep. <laughs> hey, morning, good morning. morning. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's one of them mornings with the uh, headache stuff, so I got to keep the shades on. No, no worries. I, I don't want no you to judgment here. No, no, judge away. I judge away. It looks a little ridiculous. <laughs> but but hey, come on now. This this and I, I'm picking on you because you were uh appointed to the Senate in your mid-20s, right? Mm -hmm. Um mm -hmm. but a lot of people forget, like, and, and, and I'm gonna put you on the spot, like the influence you had at that time in Bermuda, you know, driving um morning conversations on your morning show, um, a lot of things reflected politics. Now I can share some stuff that, I mean, we can laugh about it now, but the amount of times that certain people who were on the same 
political team, as you, I'm just going to say it like that, not side, but would write to the owners of the company literally to get us fired, mainly. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it, it, it was mostly me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it, was you. Um, it was you, but somehow I would get lumped into one or two of them. But in saying that, you took risk. You took risk. And when I, when Maya said what she said just now, I actually thought, I'm like, damn, Teo risked his livelihood to share political opinions, man. Yeah. <laughs> Something for people to fear still in 2024, though? A, a thousand percent. The, yes, absolutely. And, and, and that is not, to be honest with you, a disproportionate critique of mm. Bermuda exactly. This is just how it works in small places. Mm. Um, mm-hmm. Like the consequences of being different are amplified when there's that much less difference in the space. Yeah, um, yeah. Now, it, it doesn't mean that, I, it, what, what that does mean is when young people are disinterested in opening themselves up to that kind of harm, I get it. Like, mm-hmm. I, I, don't, I don't think they should be shamed for acknowledging that reality. Mm-hmm. However, <laughs> In order for us to see the progress that we say we want, folks just have to start taking those risks more often Um, because otherwise the status quo will be maintained. That that is the inevitable conclusion. Um, So yeah, it's risky, but the reward I think is necessarily worth it, I I believe. All right, real quickly, just a a comment I want to share with the audience. Um, Tanya Cheeseman says, audience, those that are uh, commenting right now from the Coming right now from the east to town, there's an accident in Shelly Bay and traffic is being diverted to Harrington Sound. So um, that just came from audience. Thank you so much. And I hope all those involved are okay. Um, but thank you for that, um, Tanya. Yeah. All right. What do um, you say for us, man? Well, the Bermuda Ocean Prosperity Plan is set to contain around nine figures worth of financial support for blue economy entrepreneurs. Deputy Premier, Home Affairs Minister, and Bob Stewart, Deputy Premier Walter Raban, shared as much during yesterday's update on the plan's progress. Funds will go towards the development of, as I said in my statement, blue economy initiatives, industries, and help to not only to develop incubator type of programs, but also to fully fund projects such as such as in renewable energy, aquaculture, blue tourism, um, and other and also sustainable fisheries, including other activities that will be within our blue our EEZ, including enforcement, conservation, and protection as well. Now Minister Raban also went on to underline that despite the ongoing pushback from the Fishermen's Association of Bermuda, apparently 60% of local professional fishermen did make contributions to the development of the plan. You have to remember, they, according to the FAB leadership, withdrew, and none of the fishermen were supposed to be participating. That clearly didn't happen. The majority of the fishermen did participate. They did make contributions. Mm-hmm. And certainly, if that many contributed, I think that's an indication that they wanted to be involved irrespective of what their leadership said. So Mm -hmm. I'm happy with that. I'm happy, I'm pleased, and I'm thankful to those fishermen who have given their contribution, irrespective of what their leadership has said to this point. Why do I feel like it's about to get a bit fishy and violent (laughs) between the minister and the fishermen's association? Like, the the whole, yeah, because they, like, the whole, I don't know, it it seemed uh, he was looking for a fight. It is quite... He's responding to an ongoing fight. Oh, yeah. Maya can probably contextualize it um, pretty well. (laughs) Yeah, it's definitely an ongoing thing between the two. And I was, because that was was my question was like, I wonder what the president may have actually said about it. I can't recall the last bit of news that they pushed out, but Mm -hmm. saying that he said 60% or 60 persons? 60%. Okay, 60%. Interesting. That is is interesting. Because I think. Um, Hold on. So basically, some of the fishermen broke. They didn't stand strong together. That's what I'm getting. But again, this is just from one side. Yeah, right yeah. That, and also, and and this is something I I know both of you can understand. Sometimes there is a meaningful disconnect from the leadership of an organization mm-hmm. and the membership of an organization, mm-hmm. right? Where the leadership takes a view. Mm-hmm. And the membership, uh, even though they've put them in a position to advocate on their behalf, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're all the way with it. 
Um, and like it, this any, feels like one of those instances. Like any other family dysfunction. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah a little bit, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, in, in other news, Transport Minister Wayne Ferbert, he's in Miami for the rest of the week, leading a delegation of local officials during the 2024 Sea Trade Global Cruise Conference. Now, this conference is the world's largest event for cruise line executives and suppliers of cruise services with nearly 10,000 industry influencers, high level cruise execs and stakeholders from approximately 120 countries attending. Now, Minister Ferbert shared Bermuda remains a proud maritime nation who's looking forward to welcoming more cruise visitors to our shores in the near future. Now, we know based on the data, some of which you see on the screen now, uh, that cruise visitors spend much less on island than air travelers. Specifically, air visitors spend almost six times more altogether than cruise tourists. One example of how this breaks down is that according to the BTA, as of 2021, cruise passengers on average spend under 35 bucks in restaurants while they're in Bermuda, while air travelers spend almost $1,700. Now, considering those numbers, it might be hard to understand the focus on the cruise sector, considering its relatively marginal economic returns. But this short explainer about the future of world travel may help make it uh, make a bit more sense. Cruise passenger numbers globally are set to hit 36 million this year, and that figure is expected to continually increase. The cruise industry is expected to generate revenue to the tune of just over $30 billion this year. In 2027, the indicator is that this figure will jump to almost $36 billion. So there's lots of paper on the table, but and that pot of money is going to continue to increase. So. Uh, but I it, think it, reference to, to it, it's politics. Let, let's just call it what it is. No disrespect. Okay. This is one of my few favorite. Um, well, I wouldn't say favorite, but we cool. But anyway, um, <laughs> I think it's, it's politics because, and what I mean by it's politics is that's a big difference. Seventeen hundred to thirty five, right? Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, people understand that seventeen hundred dollars, thirty five dollars. There's no way to make sense of that. The reason it makes sense for Bermuda to focus on tourism. I mean, sorry, cruise ship tourism mm. is political reasons. You can say we had more people. Ah, I see. Don't do, but folks, we're smart enough as a community to see through it. It's politics. Mm -hmm. More cruises, bigger ships equates to more people. Does and who's to say they actually got off? What's that? At all. <laughs> they actually got off the cruise ship at all. Yeah. Well, I just want people to see through it and for what it is. Don't like, let, let's not be, be, yeah. Got you. Thank you for the clarification, bro. Now, I may have some information here that could frustrate not just the two of you, but the audience, um, depending on what you got in your living rooms. Uh, that is to say, if you're a Roku TV owner who went digital to avoid commercials, if you're that person, this is going to get on your nerves. Because right now, Roku, T Roku TVs, they come with built-in ads, just on their content, though, right? The menu screens, first-party video channels, screensavers, et cetera. Not when you're watching your Netflix or your Hulu or your YouTube or your Crunchyroll or whatever. Until the near future, that is, because Roku just filed a new patent to give you commercials whenever they want to. Uh, and the tech YouTuber, Louis Rossman, explains exactly what this patent means is that you could insert advertisements in between the device that has an HDMI output and the television. So this means that the television will be able to detect when you've paused content and it will be able to insert an advertisement into that content, even if the content that you were using the HDMI part to view had no advertisements on it. Because apparently this is something that users are asking for. Now, here's why this is a problem, right? I, I, I don't I don't just mean technologically. I mean, like on a, on a moral level, this this angers me. Ads on your content make sense when you're watching free view stuff. That's how creators get paid. Right. Like you're mm -hmm. watching something on YouTube. It's completely free. And that person who made that content should be able to get paid. So they roll some ads on it. Right. Makes sense. But you bought your TV. They got your money. Mm -hmm. You got your device. Where in this relationship is there room to monetize us in perpetuity? <laughs> this, this is like some dystopian future fiction thing. 
like like from Cyberpunk 2077. We're literally going backwards. We're going backwards with this right now. And it actually makes me so bad. I'm like, let me let me practice a DVD player. I'm so sick. I'm so sick. <laughs> I'm done. Because I, I just I guess the bubble is never going to burst. Is is as long as we're driven by capitalism like this. Like for instance, I had a friend over a couple months ago and watching Netflix. Now again, as T-Mobile, I got Netflix who everything as part of that the catch is it's the advertising um one right so i'll be sitting back watching my reruns of martin and martin about to get punched in the face by the boxer guy tommy hearns and it goes to commercial because the, the commercials aren't even in where they used to be it's <laughs> something that i'm like it's not free because they say it's free but no i'm paying t-mobile right it's part of my mm -hmm. phone but it's, that's what they give you and i'm just like the whole point like the, what made people go to you guys was the commercial free content mm. but because you you you, you want to make more and more more money you're gonna find ways to annoy 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 i i mean just go back to cable huh because mm -hmm. youtube's irritating me too they be playing your yeah, ads if you don't have to put on they play the ads in between the songs no i'm like i'm over it oh girl <laughs> let me let me put you on the game you don't need youtube premium to to keep ads out of your youtube experience mm -hmm. If you, I don't know if you use uh, extensions on your browser, like like Google Chrome or Mozilla. Ask me or, about it. Ask me about it. Yeah, no, no. I'm telling. I want this for the audience. Ad blocker. You can get. There's a uh, half a dozen free ad blocker extensions you can get put into your browser. You never see a commercial ever again when you're on YouTube. Uh, and do it. <laughs> use it. Fight back. Stop these audience, people. I hope the audience appreciates the commercials on TDH because we got a lot for you nowadays starting today. Tell you what the weather for us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, weather-wise, the next three days should be pretty much gorgeous due to a dominant slice of high pressure. we got mostly sunny skies, temps between the low 70s and mid-60s and a comfortable breeze. Um, now, this will change once we get to the weekend because another front's moving in from the west, so the rain and wind may reappear. But from now through Friday, we're looking good. All righty, what you got for world? Uh, I'm saying world days of the year, Maya. Uh, days of the year is quite a bit, so I'm just going to name a couple. It's Sib World National Siblings Day, uh, Hug Your Dog Day, National Library Outreach Day, and National Baton Twirling Day. So, obviously, with your siblings, you know, shout them out, hit them up, go out together, or do something fun. Uh, Hug Your Dog Day, pretty simple. Show them some love. They show you love every single time they look at you. Uh, National Library Outreach Day, visit your local library even if you don't have a library card please just get one because they have they actually have dvds they have a lot of things you could do and it helps the government know who's actually utilizing it to keep it open for those who truly do need it so get a library mm -hmm. card and then national baton twirling day just shout out to all the majorettes out there oh that's what i was wondering i'm like is it police baton or majorette baton <laughs> man, i'm a black man i gotta ask these questions <laughs> Maya, I can celebrate National Siblings Day while noting another really important day today. That is, it's my sister, my baby sister, Courtney Dill, her birthday today. So it's happy crazy. birthday. Dang. Yeah. I know. Happy birthday, Courtney. I know that I got to send her some love. Man. All right. Thank happy you, bro. Birthday. And Courtney has been on the show before. Um, mm -hmm. she, she'll probably be back. Remind us how we can better take care of ourselves. Tay, mm -hmm. um, Oh, oh, big shout out to my um, siblings as well. You know, I have old sisters, you know, only boy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Really nice with the latest. Um, and also, <laughs> hug, hug your pet day. So um, family dog Bella's been running away a lot lately. So um, I think. What, uh, from the house? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's been running away. She ran. I, I, I was, man, we'll talk about it later. But she ran away again <laughs> one day. Um, she oh keeps running away. Lord. She's never been like that. And so I had to talk to our, you know, family therapist, um, pet therapist, Maya, last night. Let her know. So, um. <laughs> Yeah, but anyway, folks, <laughs> stick with us, Tay. Thanks so much. Uh, we're going to be back. We're grateful for commercials, and I hope you appreciate commercials. And we're thankful, thankful, thankful for the people who keep advertising with us. But we're going to have an extended conversation with Brittany Butterworth as we're a bit behind on time. Tay, so we'll see you later. Peace. Stick with no us. No doubt. Later. Take care. Let's face it. Life can be a little <laughs> wild. But shopping doesn't have to be. I choose Peoples, so that whether it's a prescription that needs to be filled, a toy for my little terror, or a gift for a new addition to the family, um, we'll see about that. Everything's available in one convenient location. Some call it Peoples. I call it my one-stop shop in the city. Peoples, we're here for you.
Welcome to the new bulk store, Lindo's Next Level. Wake up in the morning with enough coffee to keep you running throughout the entire day. Your pet at home deserves the best. Stock up on dog food to keep your puppy happy. Need a quick tasty lunch at home? Your chicken nuggets will be jumping right out of the freezer. What's a movie night without popcorn? You can never have too much. Lindo's Next Level. Why go anyplace else? It took 14 days to build your business plan. Six months to build the courage to leave your day job. Three weeks to find the perfect location. It took 10 days to outfit your space just right. And one day before your first client walked in the door. All totaled, it took you a full year to get your business operational. And this is just the beginning. To the entrepreneurs, the risk takers, the people that shape our economic community, we salute you and are here for you every step of the way. BEDC, providing knowledgeable, progressive, professional, and innovative support to Bermuda businesses. Noah's Ark, the largest and most trusted pet supply store for almost 30 years. Not only have you watched us grow, but we've grown together, keeping the needs of your pets first, offering advice and giving back to the community. Shop online, choose delivery, or visit us in Devonshire. And with the Egg Show in view, we will continue our yearly support and help you find everything you need for one of Bermuda's most favorite community events. See you soon. Alrighty, welcome back to the big show. My philosophy, I'm Jamal Hartman. It's the Daily Hour brought to you by the BAC Group of Companies, Medical Arts, Lindos, and People's Pharmacy. Please don't forget to subscribe on our website, thedailyhour.com. Follow us on all of our social media channels to stay up to date with all that we have going on. Help us grow beyond the mic as we do our part to continue to improve our community. The reason I'm smiling and laughing is I love to do psycho psychological, like just sit back and watch people um, watch people's behaviors right because we spoke about commercials before we took that break and i wish you all could see from my side the great thing about streaming live is you can see how many people are tuned in not who is but how many and maya correct me if i'm wrong but the not one person went off during that commercial break and you're not wrong i think it went up <laughs> It went up, they, that's my point. It went from up to one, 123 live across, well, sorry, that's not including Instagram. So over 130 people live right now. But I'm putting you on the spot. I'm putting you on the spot. Because if there's 130 of you tuned in right now, why do we only see 10 or 12 of you liking and sharing the content? Do us a favor before we bring our guest in. Like whatever platform you're on. Give us a like a love, a follow, and share this conversation, this most important conversation, because I tell you, I, I told you all the other day, I have to read and research and try to understand every yes. And I had no idea about the chat more experience. Mm. I want you to learn what I learned. I want you to know what I know, because the more we know, trust me, the better our community gets. Yes. Let's give some respect to our guests for the day. Um, Brittany Butterworth, and give a warm TDH welcome. Because what happens with algorithms, when you do like it, when you do share it, more people are exposed to the conversation. So trust me, it's not about my ego. It's about ensuring that our guests get the kind of exposure that they deserve. So let's give a warm TDH welcome. Let me make sure I don't play the wrong music. All right, right, right chair. But Brittany Butterworth join us to speak about the chat more experience. Hello, hello, welcome. Good morning. Good morning. Well, I've thoroughly enjoyed listening to the show. I, every once in a while, I'm like, oh, I got something to say about that. Um, so it's been it's been a lovely morning. Well, you know, I'm going to ask you now. Come on now. Um, no, no. First of all, thank you for getting up early, doing this with us. Um, you know, we, we appreciate you making time to do this. Again, as I just said, I had to do some reading and understand what Chatmore was. But do you have any... You know, you work with young people and so on. Um, you heard people speaking about civics and education. What, what would you do with the young people that um, you're around to get them excited about politics? Well, I'm glad you asked because um, we have a course specifically dedicated to Bermudian cultural and civic studies. 
Um, so straight through from middle school all the way to high school, they cover a variety of topics um, mm -hmm. that relate to, you know, mapping out their MPs across the island, um, getting to know their local MPs, talking to their families about that. Um, they've just recently covered uh, the marine culture in Bermuda. Mm -hmm. um, also, oops, also had the Gombe's in. Mm -hmm. um, and they also did a genealogy study. So they used Ancestry.com mm -hmm. um, and traced their their lineage back and the parents got involved as well. So it was really cool to kind of see how we were all connected. Um, but we do our best to kind of make sure that that is a very concentrated subject for our students you because faces, we want right? to facilitate yeah. global mindedness. You see our faces. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Wherever this conversation goes out there, I'm impressed already. <laughs> yeah, like that is so, that is incredibly amazing to have. Like just, wow, just wow. Because who doesn't want to know their ancestry, especially for black people specifically, like it's hard to know who our history is. Like we get, so mm -hmm. congratulations to that. Thank you for that. That's for sure. amazing. And, and you know what, as we get into the conversation, before we jump right in, just tell the audience a bit about yourself and what it is that you do with uh, Chatmore. Sure, so uh, my name is Brittany Butterworth. Um, I've been working with the school basically since it started back in um, 2004, but definitely more formally since 2020. Um, I'm a speech therapist by trade, um, and I have worked in a variety of different um, environments through that role. Um, and I've learned, you know, links to the conversation that we were having before, I've learned through experience about leading a school, leading school culture, um, and I work with a team of very experienced educators who really just help to instill a love for learning in chat more. And um, outside of that, I am a mom of two busy, beautiful boys, um, a wife of my husband, Phil, and um, a Somerset fan. You know, have to get that in there. Goodness. It was going so well. <laughs> going so well. Oh, my goodness. You know what? No one's perfect. And that that's just proof, you know, but. To everything else, we appreciate you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but tell us a bit more. So, you know, again, as I said, I've learned so much doing this show. You know, I mean, there's as small as our community is, there's so many things happening that we just don't know about. So just what is Chatmore? So Chatmore is a small private school. Um, we offer very personalized approaches to learning. Um, while we are not a school for children with um, specific learning differences, um, we are a school that embraces all types of learners um, because we just believe purely in instilling a love for learning, ensuring that every child has that spark that comes alive in them, no matter um, who they are, where they come from, and instilling a drive to leave Chatmore with whatever it is that fits their passion. So whether that's academics, whether that's um, career, um, whether that's more vocational um, studies, uh, wh whatever suits their needs, that's what we aim to to provide. Okay. Um, and so, so why would, you know, there, there's other options and so on. Um, why would a parent choose Chatmore today? Yeah, so a parent would choose Chatmore um, because we really get to know the students. Um, so that's one of the, the main things, you know, we represent the village and as students um, grow in this world that we have now, um, you need as much support as you can get. The family structures are different. So we aim to be a very family-centered school to support students in having that foundation, that solid foundation to grow. Um, a parent might also choose Chatmore because we have recently um, achieved our COBUS compliance status, which means that we've met all of the guidelines and expectations as it relates to uh, international school based out of the UK. So our curriculum is accredited. Um, our high school students work towards dual enrollment um, or a project-based curriculum or more vocational, as I mentioned. Um, and a, a parent might also choose Chatmore because we have a really big focus on wellness and the social emotional side of learning. So employers are looking for those soft skills and, and we get outdoors a lot that builds those soft skills. We explore our island. Um, we really get hands-on 
um, and, and get to build those connections and collaborative efforts within our school community. All right. Real quickly, Maya, before you ask your question, um, audience, were you familiar with uh, Chatmore? Yes or no? Just by yes or no. Simple yes or no question. Were you familiar with Chatmore? Uh, yes or no? Go ahead, Maya. All right. So, yeah, just leaning off of what Jamal just asked, but how does Chatmore differ from like formal education, like other formal educations and their options? Sure. So um, I guess one of the easiest ways to talk about this is how we're similar. Um, and then lead into how we're different. So we use pretty much the same curriculums that other mainstream private schools would use. Um, and one of our key components of our school is the IPC and the IMYC, which is a project-based curriculum. Um, and we were actually the first school on island to use it. And so now many of the other private schools use it as well. Um, we offer IGCSEs um, and we offer A-levels or dual enrollment as well. Um, how that then differs is in our approach to those curriculum. So while it's the same that you might find in other schools, our approach to it is different in that we use our outdoor campus quite a bit. Um, I don't know if you've been by, but it's a beautiful space. We're so lucky to be there. Um, we engage our students and our families in learning together. Um, and we make sure that we in involve real world learning um, as part of our curriculum too. Okay. Right. What's the profile look like of some of the students there at Chatmore? Yeah, so it's a diverse um, population actually. Um, we have a good balance of boys and girls, so about 60% boys, 40% um, girls. Uh, we actually were a boys school to start um, and then the boys voted and they won the vote to add girls. Um, so now we're co-ed. Um, and we have, uh, again, like I said, a, a very diverse uh, population as it relates to learning styles. So there are some students, just like you'd find in any other school, who may be on, uh, like with ADHD or dyslexia. But then on the other side, we have many students who are academically gifted, um, who are able to excel and push themselves um, in that area too. Democracy with young people, I love that. Yeah, let's lean, yeah. Up, lean into what more of that some more, like who are some success stories then that have like been through the Chatmore experience? Yeah, so um, one, as we were prepping for this um, talk, that uh, one student came to mind and he had just graduated last year um, and he's been with us at that time for seven years. And when he started, he was, he was not a student that was engaged in learning at all. Um, and we did a lot of work with his family and um, supporting that connection to the point that he graduated with, I, I want to say um, six GCSEs and he had started some courses at Bermuda College as well. Um, and so now he's uh, getting like a 3.75 at the college in their cul culinary arts program. And um, he just came back to visit to drop off some of his baked goods uh, a couple months ago. Um, but we really were able to see the transformation and we were able to see the transformation because we celebrated his unique strengths. He, he was not a student that would um, fit into that mold of the traditional big private school. Um, he needed someone who could connect with him, who could see him for who he was. Um, and we did that for him and he's flying now. He's, he's amazing. He's funny. Um, he, yeah, he's great. I love that. I absolutely yeah, love that. Yeah. No? Yeah. Um, yeah, I think there was a question that came in from the audience, uh, but I wanted to ask about, uh, yeah, here it is, uh, from Mark Anthony Phillips. Good morning, uh, Madam Bottomworth. Uh, what is the student to teacher ratio? Yeah, so we have uh, about a one to five student teacher ratio, so one teacher to five students. Um, we have about 45 students in total and about eight teachers. Um, and that doesn't include some of our subject specialists that might come in um, part time. Um, so we're a very uh, low student teacher ratio. And again, that just adds to that personalized approach that we offer. And we work really well as a team. Um, I think one of the key things is that when you have a team of teachers that and educators that are committed, you know, they're in it to win it, as you say, um, you see that transformation um, 
in leaps and bounds. And I'm really proud to lead a team of really awesome teachers. Like they're great. I couldn't ask for better. Nice, nice. Where are you guys located? Yeah, so we are located in Smith's um, on St. Mark's Road, um, just there across from Pokey Oak or on the yeah. other side um, by that little shop complex. I think Jillian's is there now. So on that road in between those two. Um, I did forget to mention as well that we are, we go from ages four through to 18. Um, yeah. So it's a full through school. And, and we also have multi-age classrooms. So our classes are mixed age and it's really cool to see. Um, it's one of those concepts that um, allows students to be pushed if they are feeling academically strong or socially strong in certain areas and then allows students to feel a little bit more supported if they're not as strong in an area without being pulled out for learning support or anything like that. They can get the, the personalized approach that they need within their class and within their peer group. Alrighty. Um, audience, if you have any questions or comments for Brittany, please send them through. But we did ask, did anyone, you know, in the audience, were you familiar with um, Chatmore? And we had a couple on, a few on Instagram. Uh, Gigi, Gigi says yes. Uh, City, mm -hmm. City Town Crier uh, BDA said no. Um, we have Amelia Pewhart says Chatworth is such a great school love their ideology and approach um i teach a few dual enrollment chat more students at bermuda college let's speak about that what's the relationship like with bermuda college it's awesome um we're actually really pleased to be able to offer that for our students um and we love that it gives students that opportunity to exercise their independence and um stretch themselves a little bit more while still being at home um, it's, I know you had uh, Ms. Swainson on last week, I think, uh, talking about the boarding school mm -hmm. matters. Um, and so I think that's just another USP of Bermuda is mm -hmm. that you can extend yourself and, and learn and exercise that independence still while at home. And mm -hmm. we love um, just how accommodating and open Bermuda College has been. And they've been really supportive of our students. All righty. Got a couple of questions from the audience. Uh, Rosalind Famous asking, what is the tuition for Chapmore? Yeah, so we're comparable with um, most other private schools. Um, and you can find out some more information about that on our website, which is chapmore.org. Oops. 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 She's <laughs> on mute you, right now. You, you unmute yourself and it dropped out. It there we go. There you go. <laughs> All right. I just um, bought them, and yeah, they're fun. No but you can find out more information on um, chatmore.org. But we are, um, we our tuition starts at about twenty four thousand. All right. Um, Mark Arthur C. Phillips is asking, have you reached your limits for students? Are you accepting more students? Well, actually, with that, walk us through the admissions process. Mm. Yeah. So we um, typically will start with a phone call, get to know the students um, and the families, and then invite parents in for a tour. So you can see if this is a good fit for your child. And then um, after that, there's an application form to fill out online. And then we do some visit days. So that might be one day, it might be two or three. And then we have further conversations before pr proceeding with either uh, offer or supporting you in finding another option that might fit. All right. So let's. we asked that question. How many people in the audience knew about chat more? So Dawn Furbert says no. Um, Travel and Trotty said yes. Mark Arthur C. Phillips says yes. Rez, uh, Renee Birchall said yes. Rosalind Famous said no. Siobhan uh, Postle Waite said yes. Um, Scribbles Art Shack said yes. Family owned. Uh, Emily Gill Dill said yes. Uh, Lydia Simmons says yes. Uh, Anthony Tanek says yes. Sheik Arena said no. A big yes from George Butterfield. <laughs> and Ingham says uh, heard the name only. Um, Manuela John said, not familiar with Chatmore. Uh, Renee Simmons said, yes. I'm going through all the yeses and no's. Um, Tanya Cheeseman said, yes. Sine Smith said, yes. B. Denise Hollis said, yes. Um, a yes from Snoopy Loves Donuts. Okay. Um, 
<laughs> Helene Swan said yes, and Dawn Santini hold up says yes. So I think the consensus is a lot of people were familiar and knew about it. But for those who weren't, we're glad that you were able to have this conversation with us and also add to what some people knew the, knew that you existed, but may not have had all the information and details of what mm -hmm. you do and uh, could do for them. Um, is there anything else that the audience should know about chat more before you go? Sure, I just wanted to highlight one of our programs that we offer um, and that's Dynamic Learning Weeks. So we are actually in one right now, but we set aside about three weeks in the year um, to really focus on that real world learning. So right now we have um, tennis, uh, we've got football with Cal Blackendale, um, we've got some carpentry going on, um, art with Masterworks, uh, some of the students are out surfing, we have martial arts going on, um, we've got a languages program going on intensely this week. Um, so we set aside these weeks to allow for students to just connect with one another, play board games and all of that, but then also focus on how their classroom learning links to their real world experiences. So it's really cool and we get to communicate, um, connect, sorry, with uh, community partners who are experts in these areas and the students love it. They're having a great time. I love that. I did. I, I remember hearing about Chat more. I always thought it was like an overseas school. I'm be honest with you. I, you know, I I did not know it was a local thing. So, you know, this has been a helpful conversation uh, for myself. Where can those who may be interested um, after hearing you speak today go to learn more about what it is that you do? Yeah. So you can visit our website, which is chatmore.org www.chatmore.org. You can also email us um, at admissions at chatmore.org. And then you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. All righty. And we have uh, Lorene Phillips says, I love the focus you have on leadership development for students at Chatmore. And then Suzanne Ingham, she says, I like when the kids have all ages in the classroom, they can help each team work grow together. Um, yeah, I, I, I love what I've heard. I've loved what I've learned. And I hope the audience found it helpful. Um, I mean, you blew our minds away the first thing mm -hmm. we started talking. But um, thank you for trusting our platform to have this conversation, Brittany. And if there's any updates or anything going on at Chatmore that uh, we can be of assistance uh, to either by coming on or even uh, sitting down with Maya for a, a news uh, segment, let us know. But this is definitely the kind of stuff we uh, want to be discussing rather than the uh, problems that we so-called have with education in Bermuda. So I'm happy. I'm extremely excited that um, more options are there for people to uh, learn and grow as young people into uh, good citizens and, and contributing citizens in Bermuda. So thank you. And thank you, Chat Moore. Thank you. And happy oh. birthday tomorrow, Maya. Oh, thank you. <laughs> have a great day, Brittany. Bye-bye. All right, Brittany Butterware, folks, if you appreciated that conversation, found it helpful, please give us a thumbs up, a love, a like. Make sure you share that conversation with your friends, your family, your colleagues. Make sure that if you want to avoid those political conversations, you have these kind of conversations. Trust me, they're less stressful. We're going to take a final break, come back. We're going to do two things. We'll do the daily play, but we're also going to do a hashtag giveaway. If this is your first time tuned in, you'll find out how it works after this break. Stick with us. April is National Child Abuse Prevention Month. Children depend on every single caring adult in our community to make sure they are safe from sexual harm. Keeping them safe not just in April, but every day. Whether you're a parent, a guardian, a grandparent, an aunt, an uncle, or a caregiver, we ask that you take just three hours out of your busy schedule to learn what you can do to make sure the precious children in your life are protected. They are worth it. Join the 13,000 SCARS certified adults by simply visiting our website to sign up for a free SCARS training session. Learn about online and body safety, how to protect them, and how to respond if they are harmed. This information is vital to their well being and their future. Because they are children, it is our responsibility, Bermuda, to protect them. Visit scarsbermuda.com and learn what you can do to help the child in your life stay safe. Considering the increasing challenges faced by financial institutions exasperated by market volatility, 
the need for insurance protection is a critical component of the risk management framework. At Friesenbrook, our priority is to safeguard your assets with the most optimal and cost-effective risk management cover. Therefore, we deliver a full suite of competitive insurance products to protect your business. Call us on 296-3600 to learn more about our broking services. Take a look at our work for construction workers and tradesmen. Durable, stretchable in all the right places and plenty of options for tools and accessories. Here with our wide range of tough and comfortable footwear, you can't go wrong. As you can see, Medical House really is a one-stop shop for everybody. We can't wait to see you. See it all at our new expanded location on Bakery Lane. All righty. Well, thanks again to Brittany Butterworth from Chatmore for uh, stopping by for a very important conversation. Again, if you appreciated the conversation and discussion today, please give us a thumbs up, a love, a like. Make sure you share the conversation with your friends, your family, your colleagues. Uh, make sure you... Um, you know, go on our website if you haven't already, uh, thedailyhour.com. Make sure you subscribe because you don't want to miss a lot of the announcements that we have coming in the next few weeks and months. That's where they will be made. Trust me. Um, it is uh, thanks again to the BAC Group of Companies, Medical House, Lindos, and People's Pharmacy for ensuring that we're able to do this with you on a daily basis. It is time for the Daily Play brought to you by Bermuda Trivia, now available at stores throughout Bermuda. Follow Bermuda Trivia on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok to find out why it's Bermuda's favorite trivia game. All right, Maya, are you ready? All right. Hey, yeah. topic. <laughs> It's music today. I didn't say that earlier. Yeah, okay, it's, okay. It's music today. All right. I normally got this. I normally got this. All right. You think you got this one, Maya? All right. Here we go, folks. Audience, pick up her slack if she doesn't get it. Who was the first African American to win five Grammy Awards in one year? No one here. Wow. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> I'm not smart. I'm happy that you did that. <laughs> I told you, like, I, music I got. Like, whenever it's music topics, you know I have music, Jamal. You know I have music. Sorry, audience, because I know I don't give you guys a chance. <laughs> but this is the thing, Mark. I thought that she would have said Michael Jackson, right? You know what I'm saying? Wow. Yeah, she's on fire. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm a little stupid. Uh, she, I wouldn't have guessed Lauren Hill, honestly, but that's the answer. Yeah. It's you Lauren. wouldn't have guessed Lauren Hill? I would have guessed Michael Jackson, honestly. Oh, that's because you don't know music. I guess not, Maya. My goodness, you, you feel me, Adeline? Mercy, my. Anyway, audience, hashtag the daily hour to be eligible for this week's prize to join. Who was it yesterday? Well, Stacey Ann on Monday. Some. Was it Anika? Yes, Anika. Yeah, Anika yesterday. So um, hashtag the daily hour for your chance to win while we wrap it up. Um, Maya, I'm still a bit. Yeah. Okay. Let, let's. Okay. Put put your feelings. But Maya, getting your question right so fast, you know, put it aside and let's have that back to conversation. Final thoughts on today's discussion, young people voting and then chat more. What are, final thoughts? Oh, man. Uh, my final thoughts. <sighs> Keep talking to us. Keep talking to the younger generation. Like I gotta even remind myself now because I know we all get wrapped up in every day-to-day -day thing that we're doing. But keep speaking to your cousins, your nieces, your nephews, the younger generation. Get them involved. Get them to understand. Answer the questions. Ask if they have any, have any questions because they probably do. And um, I would say from a discussion with Chatmore, I know exactly where that location is. As soon as she said, I was like, Yes, Maya, you know that is a beautiful beautiful location and i love what they're doing there and i'm so excited to hear about the ancestry thing took me just took me out of the out of the park immediately um and then just learning more about the curriculum itself and having that small interest you know i love that one-on-one -on -one. i think it is very helpful and i think you know seeing the success stories of you know individuals who may not have been able to excel in other places excel there just gives me hope i love mm. that yeah i'll say i mean i actually i just want to see young people engaged. And, you know, I, while I appreciate all that Maya's doing uh, with her space, um, I think older people, you can't see younger people as a threat. See them as opportunities to actually help yourself evolve. So engage them, meet them where they're at. Don't be afraid to meet them where they're at. Mm -hmm. uh, 
that's that's what I have to say on that. As far as chat more, um, I'm just excited that there are other options. You know, um, you know, some will say, well, there's there have always been options um, with social media with more ways of marketing and sharing things. Um, people now know about these options. So I'm excited that these options exist. I'm excited that people um, have opportunities to learn about these options rather than just being told price, but told about the differences and the benefits of what these experiences and options can do for you know their children or um, the children they uh, are leading and the like. So um, folks, I'm, I'm happy about that. Now, let's do this giveaway. Um, let's see. Let's do this. Well, it's not the giveaway. It's eligible to be in the giveaway. Let me be clear. Um, let me be clear with that. See who's going to be the Lazaki winner today. And then Maya's going to give us a daily inspiration and send us all on our way. All right, here we go. Let's hit that thing and let's do that drum roll. And see who's going to be joining Anika and Stacey Ann for Friday's giveaway. Heather Leans, congratulations to you. An OG. Yeah, 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 yeah. Happy for you, Hadeline. So you will be joining Anika and Stacy Ann. So let's just put um, Hadeline, uh, Hadeline and Anika for this week's draw, which will take place on Friday. Every day you have a chance to enter the draw. Sometimes you get it if, well, someone doesn't get the answer within one second. But anyway, uh, Maya, you've got some daily inspiration for us? I do have some daily inspiration. All right. So do you want to guess who actually said this quote when I yeah, say it? Guess it. All right. You know the name. Okay. Quote, children are the living messages we send to a time we will not see. I'll give you a hint. He was a president of the United States. Oh, Barack? No. Oh, um, not Bill Clinton. No. Um, he was an actor before president? Oh, I don't know. Ronald Reagan? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, I don't know then. John F. Kennedy. Oh, JFK? Oh, okay. That sounds about right. That that sounds like him. All right, JFK. All right. All righty. Um, folks, please don't forget to subscribe on our website, thedailyhour.com. Do it right now. Just go on there. Put your email in. That's it. We probably sent one email this year. We don't send emails all the time. We send it when it's important stuff going on that we can't just tell you on the show. So go on the website. Put your email in, thedailyhour.com. Follow us on all of our social media channels to stay up to date with all that we have going on. Help us grow beyond the, beyond the mic as we do our part to continue to improve our community. Thanks again to our partners, the BAC Group of Companies, Medical Host, Windows, and People's Pharmacy for ensuring that we can do this with you on a daily basis. As always, we appreciate you. We love you and we thank you for making us part of your daily routine. If all goes well, we'll be back to do this again with you tomorrow. It's somebody's birthday. I hope I'm getting some cake. Um, She's my Palacio. I'm Jamal Hartman. Please do make it a safe and a great day. We are is out. Peace.